Jill wants to get in the holiday mood. Buying a mega Christmas tree will prevent her from getting too distracted. Oh, I gotta buy a tree today. It's the 23rd! Two days before Christmas. Mega Christmas. And... I do have $8,000 now, so yeah, okay. Let's buy something then. You need to pick me up, Jill. Poor girl. Oh my god. Celebrate the bastardized commercial version of an already bastardized celebration. Do I have enough money to buy this and pay the bills? 10643 minus 1350. $9,000. Okay, we can buy this. Fine. We still got one more day to get the 8,000 too, so we're doing okay here. Jill bought what she wanted and she's pleased with herself. She will surely focus at work. Feeling a little bit better today? I hope so. Lulum receives mysterious messages. Halloween was back in October, but this terrifying tale didn't become popular until now. Reports say that Lilum across the city have been receiving strange transmissions with messages that are confusing at best and threatening at worst. The contents are not clear, as most of the Lilum can't remember exactly what they had heard. But the most mysterious thing of all is perhaps the fact that the Lilum could not record any of these messages while they were broadcasted. It was almost as if something blocked the Lilum from doing so. While we have nothing but anecdotal proof, even among our own Lilum, the mystery behind these messages is one we should be paying attention to. Spooky. Or a bluff. Alice rabbit hacking again? The contents are not clear because the Lilum forget. It's not just that they can't record it, but they forget it too. That's so weird. Is Kiramiki the biggest pop idol in history? The world at large is still coming to terms with the idea of Lilum being so quickly integrated into our society. Some say they can't be treated as human because they're immortal and as such cannot really understand what it's like to be alive, but most of the Kiramiki fandom would disagree. Anti-Lilum people are insane. To me, Miki knows more about life than I do, and I'm older than this damn city. Richard Show, 55, told the augmented eye. I'm with Richard, added Nacho, 6. <laughs> I may be a dog, but I'm utterly fascinated with the way she writes about things in her blog. She's impressed by everything, and nobody really knows what life's about anyway. Nacho? Dog? Don't tell me. Maybe it's from Sarah. Or maybe it's a corgi. Quincy studies possibility of allowing imports. Glitch City is one of the few places on Earth that's strictly self-sufficient. That's really surprising, actually, with an import rate of only 0.8%. However, that might change due to the recent shortages across the city. How are they so self-sufficient, but everyone's like broke and unemployed? Actually, everyone, the unemployment rate declined by 40% last year. So everyone's working to make sure that Glitch City is running, but no one's really making enough money, weirdly enough. Prime Minister Quincy revealed this morning that the government plans to have a more relaxed policy for importers. We won't lift the currency control, but we can provide them foreign currency at a low fixed rate. That way, we can secure essential items at affordable prices. Oh, that's a bad thing, right? Yeah, lack of imports means that everything is going to be highly priced because there is a finite amount of it. Maybe that's why people can't afford to live here. Why are they like that anyway? Some experts say that private companies are no longer working at full capacity, which is unsurprising news given that the Quincy government has seized most of them, resulting in a shortage crisis in the first place. Why are they seizing them? God. So he decided to not steal all of the city's funds? Good. Mm. Girl still hasn't updated her blog yet, I don't think. Is this new? Huh. I don't remember. It's been so long. Dream person. Every now and then, I wonder if I'll ever meet my significant other. All the stimuli from being born just three years ago and directly being thrown into this wonderful disaster that is the idol industry makes me think of all the things I'm missing. Accidental love, lost love, or even the gentle touch of another person. 
I feel like I'm in this bubble that won't let me catch all the possible feelings, and my senses get tired of the same environment. How timely. Accidental love, lost love. The gentle touch of another person. I want to meet new people, places, because even though I have a large bank of knowledge, I actually never experimented with what most consider normal. But you already know that from my songs. Hmm. I suddenly have an urge to hug her. Yeah, she, knowing something and experiencing something. These are all very different things. Monster Girlfriend Chirari. Can't stop playing this game. Gorgeous graphics, innovative and addictive, battle system, fun dating mini games, cute girls, that fucking music. Is this the goat? Dunno, do you like the goat girl? Heh, <laughs> I'm gonna marry a goat. It's an alright game, 8 out of 10. Shit game. No, it's a shitty game for idiot waifu bots like you. <laughs> I think the official website for Valhalla, the URL is waifubartending.com. <laughs> Menormies! God, everyone, just like what you like. It doesn't matter if people like it or not. Other people. If you like it, who cares? God. Sounds fun. It's for nerds. Like you? Mm hmm. Yeah, you're so happy, aren't you? <laughs> I don't trust your face anymore. Anyway, it's a good thing we don't have to care about our funds anymore until the bills get paid anyway, after which I'm sure there's gonna be uh, another thing to worry about. Friday! Good evening. Oh, hey. How are you feeling? Lilla, my soft and warm. <laughs> Come again? You heard me. So, on a scale from steaming pile of shit to just sad, where are you? Hmm... A sad pile of shit. I still hate myself. I'm still sad as hell, but how to put it? The noise stopped. I don't know if I explained myself. Sorta, kinda. So, how were things last night? Cozy, I must admit. I can't believe you paid Dorothy for that. Well, if you want to call that payment, I guess. Hmm? I called Dorothy to tell her what happened to you, and she was really concerned. She stuttered for a second, saying that she had the whole night to go, and she couldn't just leave her free. I asked her how much, and she said, Enough to pay for this soda I'm having is fine. What? Oh, Jill, your friends really love you. How did you get her number? I have contacts. Right. Anyway, Jill, if you need a second break or a drink or a hug, just let me know, you hear? Thanks. I'd make you the same offer, but I'm guessing hugs from me are the last thing you want. If you need a bartender, let me know, though. Nice to know. I don't know, man. I feel like I'd want to hug anyway. Because I know you're not dangerous. Not to me, anyway. Anyways, we have work to do. Remember how we saw an ad on the TV for cup noodles for like $60? So I'm guessing a soda is about that price, too. So Dorothy... Man, Dorothy probably lost some money because of me. She a real one. Let's try to be a little bit more positive today. Commencing simulation. Oh, I thought it said stimulation. <laughs> Good enough. Good for health. Bad for something else. Drive me wild. Well, maybe we're not really here yet. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah? Hmm. Still a little bit of sad. But... Dawn might be approaching. And will I be able to make it past this? The answer lies within. With renewed hope, we'll be able to do it. And even this ad right here, I'd buy that for a dollar. Uh, a dollar! What is even a dollar in Glitch City anymore? Like nothing? Literally like two cents? Time to mix drinks and change lives. Huh, it's nice to hear that again. Oh, I didn't say it yesterday. Did you say something? Did I? 
Welcome to Valhalla. Oh, it's you guys. <gasps> There's two! Hey! Be more respectful. I brought my boss here. Aren't you a part-timer here or something? My other boss. Your Sarah boss. You're talking to the great Nacho Tumbleweed Jr. Oh! <gasps> Mr. Nacho! Six. Six years old. Boss, I'm taking my break. I know what I said earlier, but you haven't even started yet. Shit. Ugh, so what brings you here today? I wanted to see the place my best soldier is working at. <laughs> soldier? Wait, aren't you the dog I served last Monday? Oh, that's why we know him already! It's not just because he works for Sarah. Huh? Oh, it's you, Dana! <laughs> that eye patch is really affecting your eyesight, huh? Soldier, why didn't you tell me you were working for Dana? No, that's not Dana. That's just Jay. <laughs> So I'm guessing you're a part of this whole... Oh, Sira. Sira thing. Part of it? I founded it! Humans have the best intentions, but they just don't get us. So I decided to create a place where dogs can be dogs. You know, that's a fair point because how do we know if what we're doing for the animals are really what they want? They can't tell us. Here, we can take in any dog without a place in this world. And I think about this sometimes too, in terms of like, maybe medical treatments. If it's a doctor and you're treating a person, a person can tell you what's wrong. But if it's an animal, they can't tell you what's wrong. You gotta like try to figure it out based on body language and stuff. We created our own heaven on earth. And do you take corgis only? Are you a corgi? I can't... I can't actually tell because you guys look so similar. I thought you were a Shiba. You're not a Corgi though, right? Do I look like one of those safer bitches? Of course not. That include other animals, but sadly, I can only take care of those who are the same species as I. You are a Corgi. Or actually you're not because you said, do I look like those safer bitches? <sighs> Sad thing is, I take it more seriously, but it's a talking Corgi with an eye patch. Wait, what are you? I mean, he said no. Do you take corgis only? No. Oh, but maybe he takes other dogs, but not just corgis. So you are a corgi, but you're a Shiba, but you guys have the exact same ears and the exact same face. <laughs> okay. Will you get anything? I'm fine. What about you, boss? Manly stuff. You sure? Did I stutter? Alright. This is gonna be deja vu. A manly drink for the dog. Maybe I should just give him something bitter. Is there something bitter and manly? Gut punch. Pile driver. Suplex. Been a while since we served a suplex. <laughs> Looks like I made the right call in giving him a manly voice. <laughs> Oh, did I do it right? Yes, I did. All on the rocks. Mixed. Here. Yes! This is just what I wanted. Blah! This tastes worse than my own butt! Hey, you asked for it. This is a really nice place, you know. You picked a good place to work at, soldier. Thanks! Does he really get paid? Your efforts to keep Sierra afloat will not go to waste. We'll make her better and better. I mean, we're pretty much on the verge of closing. Can boss really afford that? We have more urgent matters at hand, though. Like the fact that we don't have enough balls for everyone. Can't they just share the ones we have? You fool! Every dog has a right to have his own ball. If we can't provide even that, then what's the point of even trying? Wait, 
Don't tell me she just doesn't give a fuck and is spending all her money like water. <laughs> is that a possibility? Like, I'm not even listening to the dogs right now. I mean, what with the bar closing and all? But many have enjoyed the boxes more than they do the balls. That's a good point. What do you think is cheaper? A box of balls or a box of boxes? Are there boxes of boxes? Of course there are! How do you think they ship boxes? Tied together? Tied together? T don't be silly. Unless she's paying him straight from her pocket, Boss is that kind of woman. I mean, every single day when she was giving me tips, I never got the impression that was from the bar. That was from her directly, right? So yeah, Boss is that kind of woman. This world is filled with all sorts of recursive madness, you know? Doctors consult doctors, boxes come in boxes, bottles come in bottles... Bottles come in bottles? Ugh, as expected from you, boss! Wait, that theory only works assuming she's actually paying him with money. For all I know, she might be paying him with stakes, or boxes, or balls. So tomorrow, you're gonna check for people still selling boxes, you hear? Sir, yes sir! Except that to boss, a good steak is more valuable than money. Wait, what if they come with foil? Russ and Strauss had to be taken to the vet because he ate the foil a piece of cheese came in. Curses! You're right, we need a contingency plan. Besides, boss is not one to scam people, let alone a dog. I wonder if we can strike a deal with a vet those safe our bastards have. She's always so nice with us. I know! Her smile is so cute, too! So it's better that we vet for a vet? Yes! Put that on the list! Ah, Nacho! Oh, yeah. Forgot she knew the dog. Are you staying for a while? I was just passing by. I've got some errands to run. Great! Gil can go with you. I can? You will. I'll still get paid for today, right? That depends on Nacho's evaluation. Alright, Greenhorn! Let's get going! <sighs> oh, I'm paying him anyways, by the way. Just wanted to mess around with him. Yeah, definitely doesn't sound like the kind of boss that would cheap out on... wages. No, that's not the problem here. Why make him do that? Gil looked like he needed to take a good break, and he's a kind who just not accepts such a thing. Hey, kinda sounds like me. But with Nacho, he'd have something to do, and he'd be away from the bar for a bit. When you put it that way... Anyway, I'm going back to my office. Your boss sure is nice! Glad I'm working with her too! Yeah. A boss that emotionally cares for you, too. That's... that's a gem. So, you having anything? Actually, I'm just gonna go sit over there and be on standby. Await orders. Okay. As you should be, because why would you be drinking on the job? Oh shit. I missed a chance to ask how, or if he even gets paid with money. Man, I sure need to get wasted. I fail to see how getting wasted will make you feel bad. Shiva! Oh, for fuck's sake, you piece of scrap. We just got out of a building full of dogs. But this one has a Hawaiian shirt and sunglasses. Hey there, robot. And he talks. <sighs> Welcome to Valhalla. Hey, Jill. Give me a beer, will you? Gotcha. Does Deal want anything? Okay. Roll! Sir, yes sir! Oh, so cute! He's fine. Just a beer then. Friday after work isn't just a beer though, it's the beer. You got it, lady. Can't argue with that. A beer for Betty can make it big for the heck of it. <laughs> Deal's reaction to the dog is completely opposite to Dorothy's, but the initial reaction was similar. A lot of screaming, but... Is it a scream of joy or sadness? 
Turns out it's happiness. Here, let's make it special. Yeah! Cheers! Hey, Jill! Do you like beer? The amount of beer cans in my apartment is becoming a problem, actually. I had this friend back in high school who made some pretty nice crafts with them. I'm still in contact with him, if you're interested. <laughs> no thanks. The last thing I need right now is more crap taking space. So, how are things up at Dogtown? Oh yeah, you guys work as a... Um, she works with some dogs. Well, that Laura girl is stirring things up, for better or for worse. Is that the girl who was looking pretty, uh, like she can improve the way she dresses or something? For worse? She's, um, like a rabbit. An overtly politically correct rabbit. R rabbit? Never had a pet rabbit? They're a nervous mess that gets startled over the littlest things. And this girl is on the constant lookout, scared of saying something that might irk someone. It doesn't have to be the person she's speaking with, even. It's no problem in the company, but the other day, we went out together and holy shit! Poor girl can't speak properly. She pauses every sentence to make sure she doesn't say something offensive. She's a nice girl, and it's sweet that she tries so hard to not offend anyone. But seriously, she tries too hard. Hmm, I feel like that's learned behavior. To be honest, I feel like sometimes I'm this way too. But that's a byproduct of me broadcasting my voice to the world though. It's very easy for people to misunderstand what I say, so I gotta be very exact with what I mean. In Laura's case, it's probably a lot of social anxiety and whatnot, which I also can relate to, so... Laura, I'm cheering for you. You don't help either. Hmm? You randomly yell, what did you say? Whenever she's within earshot distance. Yeah, well... It's just that she looks so cute when she's startled. <laughs> Here we have the crux of the issue. Like a rabbit. It raises up the question whether she's really like that. Or if you're the one making her wary of anything she says. Well, why don't we test that? How? You go out with her. Why? To test if it's really me who makes her like that. It's not like you can say no, you know? I mean, it's my honor that's on the line here. I want to prove you're only talking shit about me. Even if you were right, you have quite the fixation on that girl. She's fun. Fun how? She actually reacts when I tease her, unlike you. You like her! You like her! You're acting like a little schoolboy, teasing the girl he likes. Quit it! Normally, if it's a fun thing, I would say, okay, sure, whatever, but you're you're making her so startled to the point that she's so nervous. That's kind of bad for her. You take it in your stride, but she actually gets startled, squirms, and then gets uncomfortable. How is that any good? She's cute, and her reactions are cute. But if you keep it up, she'll either leave or get used to you. You know, like me. Oh shit, you're right. I must save my teasing for when the moment is just right then. No, that's not the problem. It is for me. And what are you doing here? What about the dog? He said he had to go out. By the way, he said his name was... No! Jill, why did you cut him off? Say, this Laura girl, do you guys get along? I wouldn't know. We get along as co-workers at the very least. What kind of girl is she? Aside from the whole politically correct rabbit thing. Slow. She's the kind that does things so carefully that she does them really, really slowly. Really, really slowly. 
I can't deny that when she actually finished stuff, she does a great job, but... It's unnerving. She doesn't actually have to be with us in the building, though. She's more like a freelancer. Why is she there, then? Because she likes dogs. And that's why I insist that you two would make a fine couple. That's a really superficial statement. It's like saying you'd be fine with someone because you're both women. Is that not the case, Betty? Okay, bad example. <laughs> May I say something? By all means. If that Laura girl is really as bland as you claim her to be, wouldn't she be better off with a more, um... A more assertive person, Lilum, um... A more assertive partner? Yo, piece of scrap. She's totally calling you a pussy. She's right, though. Sharing interests and being compatible are totally different things. But then, you'd be underestimating the power of love! Whether you want to admit it or not, love changes people for the better, or for worse. Yup. Who knows? Maybe you'll become more assertive after spending time with her. Or she'll drive me nuts. I guess that's a possibility, too. Still, why are you so insistent on getting me and her together? Because she's like a cute rabbit, so someone might try to eat her out there. It'd be a lot easier to keep her in my sight. So in short, your motherly instincts arose because of Laura. Why not see if she likes you, and... You already tried to hit on her, didn't you? <sighs> you make me sound like some skirt chaser. She's not into girls. How did you find out? I asked her directly. Of course you did. Hey, well, if you have a question, why skirt around it? No pun intended. Asking directly. Good. She seemed... Um, giddy afterwards, though. I heard her muttering something about meeting her first lesbian. <laughs> what? Oh my god. It was weird. Oh. That is weird. Okay. Enough lore for a night. That? Refrain from using that's what you said last night jokes or variations thereof, please. Party pooper. Let's get a drink then. Sounds good. I'll have a bloom light, please. Get me a fringe weaver. Alright. Does it matter which order I do them in? I hope not. But yeah, like, I don't know. If you... If, like, Betty is a lesbian, the dating pool becomes so much smaller than if you're straight. So I guess she has to be a bit more aggressive about it. And you gotta have these strange conversations, strange-ish conversations about how, hey, are you attracted to girls? And I don't know, everything is a lot harder. I'm so happy about meeting my first lesbian is totally weird though. <laughs> Bloom light? Fringe Weaver. Fringe Weaver F, F. I don't even know what I'm doing. Right, this one. Duh, duh. Okay. Hmm? Here you go. I wonder why it's called the Bloom Light. Seems like it was first developed at some video games event. The creator said something about making the attendees feel like their customers do. Said attendees were, of course, part of some big games company. Seems that company always used too much bloom lighting, so the bartender there literally made them drink all the bloom. Oh, <coughs> what company is this? Um, what game uses a lot of bloom lighting? Hmm, I can't really think of one off the top of my head. So it's not called that because it glows in the dark? Not this one, no. Come to think of it, did you ever change because of a relationship, Jill? In more ways than one, I guess. 
I actually feel like that's one of the biggest chances for someone to change. Beginning or ending a relationship. Would you say for better or for worse? I guess for the better. I'm too thick-headed to develop any new bad habits. Well, it usually should be for the better. You're always learning something. Although, thanks to my first boyfriend, I did pick up a very annoying habit of correcting people's grammar on the fly. Pretty annoying when I think back to it. So you were one of those kinds of people. As for me, sometimes I think I became more... Uh, what's the word? Cynical? Jaded? Bitter? Tired of the crap this world and everyone in it throws on a daily basis? Hey. I'm just quoting you. <sighs> but yeah, I think I became all that because of this one girlfriend I had in college. She got me into the whole activism thing in the first place. How was that bad? We'd all go and protest. We'd start all kinds of movements to see things changed. I really got into the whole thing. But whenever I wanted to get more serious, I'd find myself coming up against a wall. That wall is an analogy for the fact that not everyone was willing to go that far. I found out pretty fast that most of them were in the whole thing because of some shitty fad. And not because they actually believed in whatever movement they were championing. So I moved from group to group, only to find people who were in it because of a fad. And when they weren't in it because of a fad, they were of the dangerous extremist kind. <sighs> My tolerance for people's shit was greatly diminished after all that. So it wasn't so much the person you had a relationship with, but rather, other people. Um... <laughs> you seriously never thought about it that way? Uh... You need to stop putting the blame for what you do on past relationships. Whatever! Where's the other guy, by the way? He... He had to escort one of the dogs outside. Figures. Oh, yeah. The one that was here asked if you were the nice vet lady that works at the Safe Art Toy Company. <gasps> oh! Oh, that's right, that's right! You were who they were talking about! I suppose he's interested in talking to you, or something. Why didn't he do it, then? I don't know. You've been doing a few jobs on the side, haven't you? The pay from the dogs isn't enough to keep up with the mounting debts. I don't know how you do it. It's hard to believe dogs pay you at all. But this is coming from someone working at a place that pays for a dog, for doing fuck all. Or at least I think we're paying him. I'm not completely certain we do. Will you get anything else? Well... We're fine, but we have to get up early tomorrow. And by we, I really mean her. She got invited to a picnic, and I won't stand to hear another had to go to a picnic with a hangover story. Fine. Let's go then. See ya, Jill. Bye. Please come again. <laughs> I kinda like Betty. Like, she's obviously, uh, just like how she was talking about Laura. Laura's a person who is very agreeable. She doesn't want to trip up anybody. She doesn't want to offend anybody. But conversely, Betty, she doesn't really care about what she says. She just says it. So I kind of admire that. Man, you're such a party pooper. You'll be the party pooper tomorrow if you keep drinking. Boss, I'll take my break. Call me if someone comes. All right. Yeah, they have a pretty interesting dynamic going on. <laughs> Deal and Betty. Most of the time, it just seems like Betty or Deal putting up with Betty's shit. <laughs> pretty much. But I'm sure their bond runs deep. Now, since Jill was talking about her relationships and she didn't seem super sad, I feel like she's getting a bit better. No dogs in sight. No, why don't we continue? Okay then, back to work. Welcome to Valhal... Oh, hey there, Alma. Hmm, you okay? Um... 
<sighs> she seems down. Maybe there's something I can give her to cheer her up? Let's try to cheer Alma up. She might like classy drinks, but what she really likes... Uh, what did she really like again? What did she drink before when she came here? Classy drink. Was it a piano woman? Or no. Alma's a pretty heavy drinker. She knows all the names and stuff. Well, if worse comes to worse, we can always do one of these drinks. A Brantini? Maybe something a bit happier? Sweet, classy, happy, Brantini. Bubbly, classy, burning. Bubbly, classy, strong. Sour, classy, burning. Yeah, let's do the happy drink. There's only one happy, classy drink. The Brantini. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. One. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. Oop. One, two, three. One. Hey. Hmm? And this? It's on me. Drink. So you at least change your expression. <sighs> Why not just say you're worried about me? You got the message anyway, didn't you? <laughs> so? How is it? A Brantini! So you do pay attention to what I asked for! Oh! Did I get it right? You have quite the fixation with Brantinis. I actually didn't remember. <laughs> but it was a classy happy drink, so I'm happy if you're happy. To be honest, they suit you. Hey, wanna hear a silly story? Always. Oh. When I turned 21, my dad and I went to a bar to celebrate. Just him and I. He told me to dress well enough that he looked like my sugar daddy. <laughs> it was a fun night. We pretended at times we were dating. I managed to blow off some steam about my mom. Right, Alma's family was the one where she had five siblings and she had some family issues going on, was it? Her sister recently got divorced. But the highlight was him ordering a Brantini for me. I've had plenty of drinks and gotten wasted many times since I was 15, but that drink was different. It wasn't about getting drunk. The drink itself was a pleasure. He too said they suited me somehow. Oh? Ever since that day, he's called me Brantini Girl from time to time. Your dad sounds like a cool guy. <laughs> you should meet him sometime. So, why are you deflating? Deflating? When I got sad and started sighing repeatedly, my grandpa would warn me that I would start deflating like an old tire if I kept it up. <laughs> so what is it? Was it the news about people dressing in bunny suits after the whole Alice Rabbit boom? Nah, that's old news. I mean, it is a problem, but such a thing would only annoy me. Say, Jill, how's your mood right now? I want to ruin it by blowing off all my stored steam. Silly Alma, I've been feeling like utter shit the last couple of days. You can't make me feel worse. Yeah, let's feel like shit together. So, go ahead. Unwind all your worries on me. Don't say I didn't warn you. Okay, so... Remember my sister Diana? The one that separated from her husband and forgot her kids while fucking her way around or something? Perfect summary. I'll use it next time. I didn't tell you the whole story then. More specifically, that she threw her husband out after months of abuse. <gasps> the abuser is your sister. Yeah, because Alma got a ride from the husband last time. Oh. However, that woman is incapable of getting a job and maintaining herself. And I mean that. She never even thinks about selling some stuff or trying to earn her bread. She just expects a guy to do all that for her. I have no idea why she turned out like that. Both my mom and dad were hard workers. 
They even started a small shop to have something to do after retirement. It might be that it's the eldest sister, right? So at one point, maybe she was still an only child. And then because your parents were such hard workers, they really doted on her. But I don't think she was an only child for that long. I assume her other older sisters are probably like maybe two or three years apart from her. I think Alma mentioned it before. Huh. So, what does this fully capable woman do a couple weeks later? Why, bring her abusive husband back, of course. Oh, the husband's the abusive one. But you... But isn't this the same one that you got a ride from before? You said you guys were friends from all the way back. What? Yup. And the guy spent a couple of days with her before leaving her again. He had a nice couple of hot steamy nights and then left. I... well... Huh. You reacted like my little brother and sister after hearing that. But that story doesn't end there. Oh no. So she's broke and can't even get enough for a bus. Even though she'd probably be glad to sell her ass just to get money. And it was up to me to pick her up. For the last couple of days, she left her kids with my parents. And being such sweet angels, they've made a mess out of the whole place. Bernardo and Eva are actually staying with me a couple of days to give them some peace. It doesn't help that I never got along with Diana. So we're in the car, and she asks how her kids are. And of course, after all the built-up tension, I just... <sighs> exploded. First, I started ranting about how her kids are growing up seeing some messed up stuff. I started scolding her about not taking responsibility, about not taking proper care of her children. I tell her that she's in no place to have all those escapades. And after all that, she just says, What the hell do you know? You don't have any kids. Yeah, you slutty skank. I don't have kids, but I'm not broke just because I refuse to take a job. I don't have kids because I'm not leaving them in the first barely familiar house I find. I don't have kids, but I'm not letting that guy that hit me on a regular basis back into my bed. I don't have kids, but I pretty much raised Eva and Bernardo, and they've all turned out pretty damn well. I don't have kids, but I'm not a cheap whore! Ah! Damn. I... I don't know what to say. There's nothing to say. Just be a good listener and nod and smile. It's tough though because, I don't know, you always hear stuff like blood is thicker than water. So family... Family is really important, but then some people's families are just not worth caring about. I bet someone right now is typing in the comments, Hey Wellens, did you know that the full saying is the blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb? Which actually means the exact opposite of family comes first. Family is something you can't choose, but your friends are who you can pick. So I don't know, man. It really just depends on if you got lucky in the draw of life. And hey, no matter what, you always get a choice later in life to make better friends. Hmm. I love my family, and I put them above all else. But Diana is seriously pushing the boundaries of what I can allow. Any way I could help? You just did. Hmm? I know who I'm dealing with. I'm not one to let stuff like that get to me. I'm still angry as hell though, and I couldn't just discuss this with any of my family members. I can't tell my mom, your daughter is a slut. I just needed to get this all off my chest, you know? Well, from what I see, there's still a lot more to get off your chest. It's swollen as fuck. Nah, all you see here is filled with love and dreams. <laughs> is everyone in your family as busty as you? The worst offender is my dad, actually. <laughs> kidding, kidding. 
I guess the only one that didn't get the big boobs gene was Eva. She insists on getting surgery or genetic treatment, but I tell her she's fine the way she is. These can actually be more of a hassle than a blessing. Yeah, well, to quote Donovan from 20 bajillion years ago, there is a market for everything. Big, small, everything in between. And poor Bernardo. His breasts actually started growing when he was eight. I just hope I don't take too much from my mother's side of the family. Yeah, so I think Bernardo is trans. And Alma isn't tripping up on it anymore. Probably because the first time she came, it just happened, so... The transition to using the proper wording took some time. My father's sister still looked quite young, but when menopause hit, my mother lost her looks rather quickly. Any good genes you got from your family, Jill? Uh, good enough skin and hair, I guess. There's a thing about a shrimp allergy, but so far, I haven't had any problems with that. Oh, I'm really, really grateful and thankful that I don't have any allergies to anything that I know of. Thank you so much, Gene Lottery! Oh, I see. Hey, you know what worries me the most about the whole Diana situation? How your nephews are turning out? If she leaves them with my mom, they'll turn out better than her, somehow. Actually, what worries me is... What if I end up like that too? How so? If I find a good man, and I settle down, what if he turns out shitty? What if I have a sudden burst, where I wanna live my life, and end up like that? What if I have kids, and I end up neglecting them, because of all that? <sighs> if you ask me, the fact that you're even worried about it is indication enough that you'll be fine. Agreed, entirely. Even though Alma regularly... well... I don't think she really sleeps around, but she cycles between relationships really often. Which, I mean... If every party is okay with it, that's... That's a fine lifestyle to have. Do whatever you want, whatever makes you happy. You think? I'm pretty sure. You said before that she pretty much married the guy after a couple of months, right? Yeah. No offense, but those are the kind of people who wouldn't even think about all that. Besides, if any guy ends up marrying you, it's because he passed your rational standards. Hey! Am I lying? No, but there are things best kept as unspoken truths. God, I wonder if I'll ever find a good guy. You will. You'll know when the time comes. I sure hope so. For now, the time has come to get another drink. What can I get you? Hmm. Get me something with ice, but alcoholic, please. Alright. That's something that we can't really do by looking in the categories. So I guess we can just go through one by one. Ice and alcohol, so Carmotrine. Oh, Bad Touch works. But Sour Classy Vintage. Classy! She likes classy anyway, right? Okay, so Bad Touch is one candidate. Looking at the money here. On the rocks, on the rocks, on the rocks. Bloom Light. Spicy promo bland. Mm-hmm. On the rocks, on the rocks. Cobalt Velvet. Bubbly, classy, burning. 280. Uh, on the rocks, on the rocks, on the rocks, on the rocks. Mercury Blast. Sour, classy, burning. <laughs> so it seems like classy, like all these classy drinks are usually upper alley anyway. Yep, on the rocks. Sweet girly happy. Alma strikes me as the kind of girl who can't get drunk. Because her tolerance is just too dang high. So, I'm not going to try to worry too much about that then. Sunshine Cloud. Yeah, why don't we just give her the Cobalt Velvet then? It's the most expensive classy drink that needs ice and is alcoholic. Okay, one, two. One, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Big drink. It's like champagne served on a cup that had a bit of cola left. Here you go. Thanks. I needed to cool down a bit. 
That's why I'm here. So, you said you felt shitty the last couple of days. Why? Don't think too much about it. Oh, Jill. Alma? This situation here is the perfect time for you to spill your guts. The perfect person? A friend that you're comfortable with. And right after she told you her secrets too, so I feel like if you want to open up to someone, now would be a good time. Oh, come on. You heard my problems. I want to help you too. Don't worry too much. Oh, she's so tight-lipped. Really. Right. I almost forgot to tell you something. What is it? Well, gameplay-wise, like in terms of the story, they might not want Jill to talk about it because we as a player already know about what happened, so they don't want to repeat it. But still, I kind of want Jill to open up to her too. My boss is throwing a mega Christmas party this Sunday. You want to come? Sure. Something tells me this mega Christmas is going to be a mess in my parents' home, so I'd rather avoid it. Are you guys getting chicken? I can get one. Hmm, to be honest, I wouldn't know. You can bring it if you want. It won't go to waste. Gotcha. Hmm, say, Jill, what's your favorite part of the chicken? Favorite part? I guess I like legs the most. Really? I like breasts better. Breast is a bit too simple, don't you think? Legs have a better texture. Well, breast is like what people eat when they want to go on like a calorie diet. Cause there's no fat. There's no fat anywhere. It's too... It's too bland. Maybe. But simple is usually better. Breast is easier to enjoy than legs. And a lot less messy. <laughs> you silly girls. Boss? You're there talking about breasts and legs when everyone knows the best parts are the wings. Boss, what's that? Spicy chicken wings. Where did you get spicy chicken wings? From a spicy chicken. You know, spicy chicken, the shop two blocks from here. Sorry, let me rephrase that. Why are you carrying a bucket of spicy chicken wings? Why aren't you carrying a bucket of spicy chicken wings? Well, because... Huh? Thought as much. Yo, Armitage! Alma. I know what I said. Will the chicken you're talking about be cooked already? Mm, you might need to heat it up. But it'll be cooked otherwise. Great! I expect you here Sunday at 8pm. Thanks. Anyway, I'll be back to my office. <laughs> she just came out of nowhere with a bucket of spicy chicken wings and didn't offer any to us. Oh! Oh! Ah! <laughs> she left the bucket. Want some? Don't mind if I do. Oh, mild spice. Nice. I don't know if this is true, but I remember when I was younger, my mom kept harping on and on about how in the spicy chicken wing, or uh, regular chicken wings, it's not good to eat the tip of the wing because that's where all the hormones go. You know, the injected hormones and stuff. So we never really ate spicy chicken wings, or pff, regular chicken wings, in my household. Because scared of hormones and genetic engineering. <laughs> Weird. Maybe she got a mixed up order, and that's why she left them here. She usually orders stronger stuff? I found buckets that make my throat itch just from being near them. Oh. Hmm. She got it for you guys. Say, Jill. What kind of guys do you like? That's a sudden question. Just randomly thinking about this again, but going back to earlier how Betty is lesbian. The moment people talk to you about your preferences, the vast majority of people immediately assume you're straight. It's just so much harder when you're not. That's a sudden question. I'm not too picky with guys, to be honest. I want them to be decent enough. Not jealous, not aggressive, responsible enough to keep a job. That's no good. Do you like them buff? What about tall? Yeah, what the hell, man? Give me something more concrete. Hmm. No tattoos or piercings, I guess. Never liked either. What about you? I like them well-dressed. 
If they go out in iron shirts and well-coordinated clothes, they're sure to catch my eye. Some muscle is always fine too, but sharply dressed males catch my attention faster. And yet you're still single. That's how I like my man. My potential husband, on the other hand, is another matter completely. I see. <laughs> it's like really weirdly realistic when people list that the people I want to date as a boyfriend versus husband would be different. <laughs> so, can you get me a drink here? The spicy wings turn out to be spicy. What do I get you? Anything, as long as it helps me with the spiciness in my mouth. Okay. Like a... icy drink? Yeah, give her spice tea! <laughs> I don't know, something on the rocks? Good old beer? On the rocks, on the rocks. Another cobalt velvet? I'm not sure what would be good. Optional Carmotrine? No, I'm looking for ice. Ice, ice, ice. Mercury Blast? Sour, classy, burning! No. No burning. Sweet, girly, happy, moon blast? I feel like that's not really her taste, though. Her style. Piano mat? Strong? Something bland. Yeah, I think something bland will be better here. Maybe not bitter? Milk would be good for spicy, right? But nothing here. <laughs> We're in a bar, not a dairy farm. Sour promo bland. Doesn't really seem like there's that many good options. You can try the moon blast. Yeah? Sweet girly happy? Get the spiciness out. One, two, three. One. One. One, two. One, two, three, four, five, six. One. One. One, two. On the rocks? I don't think she'll like the taste, but if it can get the spiciness away... Here. Whew, it helped. Thanks. Alright, so, next question. What kind of girl do you like? Okay, earlier what I was saying applied for people you don't know well. But Alma does know that Jill is bi, so doesn't apply to her. <clears throat> mm hmm. You first. <laughs> Sorry, I don't swing that way. Sure, I have no qualms about saying a girl is cute or cool, but... Nope, I prefer men in my bed. Now you. Shit. Shit. Just calm down. <laughs> I'm suddenly thinking about how when we were talking to Boss, didn't we say something about how Alma is super damn hot? <laughs> uh, I guess I like girls with light-colored hair. Oh, wow! What an amazing coincidence! <laughs> light-colored hair? Yeah, you know, like redheads and such. What about white, like your boss? You were just setting me up for that comment, weren't you? <laughs> That's right, my boss! <laughs> Sorry, it's just that when she got here with a bucket of wings, your eyes pretty much started sparkling. Hair color is such a changeable thing, though. Anything else? Your whole behavior transformed. You became giddy and cheerful all of a sudden. <laughs> Even though we can't tell, other people can. Hey, I can't blame you. She's pretty nice. I just felt like teasing you. Meh. Nah. So, light-colored hair. What about blondes? Do you like me? Yeah, I guess. Mm, let's say I'm into girls too, and I start hitting on you. Would you go along with it? Mm, nice body, pretty face, and a good apartment. I wouldn't ever let you go. <laughs> okay then, enough tangents. Why don't you tell me why you were feeling shitty these last days? Mmm, so I do like Alma, but maybe from more of um admiring the female body and form perspective. Because I don't really get shy when saying that I like her, but when it's my boss. Alma does want to know about me, though. What? Oh, that. I told you not to think too much about it. And I told you I want to know. 
Come on, Jill. You've heard my problem so many times. Now I want to help you. Come on. Come here. Huh? I told you to sit here. Come on. Huh? What? Oh, <gasps> What are you... Is this the first time we've seen Jill's sprite? I know I used it in the thumbnail for the first episode, but I don't think we've ever seen this. Oh my god. <clears throat> Alright then. Now, I'm the bartender, and you're the client. <sighs> Hardly. The bartending station only works with me. I see. Okay. Okay then, I move this... Whoa! Oh! Did Alma just hack me? <laughs> okay then. I move this here, click here, and... Maybe she can hack from anywhere she wants, because she's got like a cybernetic arm. Her finger. Her finger is a USB port. <laughs> Now it works for you, for me, and that dog in a Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> Why him too? He's a dog in a fucking Hawaiian shirt. Right, and how did you even manage to... Oh, yeah, hacker, right. Now we've changed roles. You've been feeling shitty. Mind telling me why? It's... it's a long story. I don't even know where to start. Start from the beginning. Okay then, it's something that goes around back to my college years. Whoa, that's taking it way back. Back in compulsory education, I never made too much of an effort, but I managed to get high grades. Even in PE, I managed to do well enough to always get perfect grades. You a smart cookie, Jill. And then of course, when I got to college, shit started getting hard. I had this perfectionist streak that wouldn't let me fail anything. Mmm. Perfectionists? When you hear about this concept, you feel like they always get perfect and they'll do everything in their power to get that perfection. But I've read that it could actually be the opposite. Unless if they know for sure they can do it perfectly, they just shut down and don't do anything. Burning my eyelashes studying, I eventually managed to keep up good grades. Not in Jill's case, fortunately. About half a career, I met a student teacher. Her name was Lenore. She helped me a lot with my studies. She even got me into stuff that gave more credits. I really liked her. And after some time, I found out she liked me too. Oh ho ho? We started going out. I met all her family even, and... You want a drink? What? A drink. Around this time, there's usually a pause that makes you offer a drink to the client. <laughs> there was no such pause. Please, I want to test this whole bartending interface. <sighs> a sugar rush then. You can't mess that up. Right. Jill asked for a sugar rush. Now, how did this work again? <laughs> oh, oh, I missed it earlier. Hold on. Did it say Alma here just now? They wrote over Jill's name. <laughs> Man, the systems are so easily hacked. Jeez. Wow. Sugar Rush. Hey, I'm really glad they're making Jill tell the story. Because I really thought it was going to be a, oh, we don't want the player to hear it twice again, so we're just not going to do it. Because really, we don't really know the full story. All mixed. How much tolerance do you have, Jill? Sweet, light, and fruity. Wow! Give me a sugar rush. You can't mess that up. <laughs> That's way too much powder delta. <laughs> One, two, three, four. One, two. Oh, God. Here we go. <clears throat> As I was saying. So, Jill, here's your sugar rush that I didn't mess up. Zero dollars. <laughs> Here. Thanks. How is it? Mm, like I said, you can't mess up a sugar rush. Hmm. <laughs> I have this gut feeling that with your body, you'd make a bartender than me. You're selling yourself too short. You're cute, you know? People don't go to bars for cuteness, though. You know why she's extra cute? At 27, most people wouldn't have this kind of like, um... pigtail kind of style. You can't see it on the other side, but she has pigtails and it's... it's pretty cute. 
You've obviously never been to a cat bar then. Besides, my boobs can be a hassle when trying to move around this kind of stuff. So, keep telling that story. <sighs> well, as the career went on and on, it got harder and harder. The last year and a half of it became nothing but study session after study session, investigations, my thesis. When the graduation ceremony came, I had to make a speech and suddenly, while reading said speech, I almost had a panic attack. Fear of public speaking? I realized I lost about a year and a half of my life. I try to remember if I did anything fun at all, but all I could remember was studying and investigating new topics. I didn't even enjoy doing all that, so I was just standing there and the satisfaction of graduating was minimal. I realized I had only gone through the motions day after day from high school to graduating. I... I felt like whole years of my life had slipped through my fingers. I never stopped to think if I enjoyed what I was doing. In fact, I never stopped. But at that point, I stopped and realized I needed a breather or something. Did I even like my career? It was all terrifying as hell. I needed all of my strength to not start running like a panicked mess. Hmm... <sighs> so a couple of months later, I get an offer to start working at this big research facility. Lenore was ecstatic. She was so proud of me back then. But I was just scared. That would be my job. I'd spend my life expanding on what I did during that year and a half. What if I had a sudden realization, like the one I had at graduation, or when I turned 40? I didn't know what to do, but I sure as hell wasn't taking that offer. Uh, like I said before, it's uh, this time is rough. It's really unreasonable that they make you decide the rest of your life when you're like 18. But I also feel like it's because of some expectations that you accomplish the most of what you do with your life in your 20s and then maybe 30s. Because a lot of people still start careers really or relatively late into their life. But we always get this idea hammered into us that, oh, 20s are your golden years, after that, you're basically as good as dead. So, eh. I told Lenore and she freaked out. She confessed that she was jealous because she never got such a chance. Things evolved pretty quickly. She said one too many things. I said one too many things. In the end, I just stormed out of her house and I broke a vase in the process. After that, I never spoke to her again. Oh my god. Damn. I'm sorry, I... I suddenly feel bad for pushing you to tell me all that. Why are you feeling shitty about that after all this time, though? Unless you've been feeling shitty for years. I have, but it's not just because of that. Hmm? The other day, Lenore's sister, Gabrielle, came to this bar. Apparently Lenore died last week. Localized nanomachine rejection. A heart attack. Apparently, she had it for a long time, but never told anyone. And coincidentally, it got worse after I left. And I just can't stop thinking about it. Wondering if me being there would have made a difference. And if it's true, she had that for a long time. Why didn't she tell me she was sick when we were together? Also, it might be a genetic condition then, but she just never told anybody. Hmm. That's kind of messed up. Because it's like, they were together, and her heart never had any problems. And then, the moment Jill leaves, she gets a heart attack. I don't know. I just feel like all kinds of failure. Jill... And to make it worse, I also lashed out at Gabby. Yes, she was blaming me for her sister's death and all, but... She's just a kid for fuck's sake. She lost a sister who pretty much raised her on her own. And to top it all off, I suddenly can't remember what stopped me from apologizing. 
Yeah, that's the crazy part though. You can have an argument, but then to just suddenly stop talking to each other for three years. That is... Uh, that's heartbreaking. Literally. Pride? Fear? A stupid effort to leave the most awesome person I love as a thing of the past? Who cares? I lost my chance to apologize to her forever. Truly, truly, forever. I'm such a piece of shit. A selfish piece of shit. It really wasn't your fault though, because... Lenora was trying to live vicariously through you, but... If that's not the path you wanted to take, then it's not the path you wanted to take, and nobody can change that. Again! Something something societal expectations, killing people, god. I honestly don't know what to say. I... didn't expect the story to be this... I... Yo, boob tender. Yes? Can you get me a big beer here? Coming right up! A big beer, a big beer, a big beer. What makes a beer big in this thing? <laughs> I like how she bothered changing her name. Like that's actually even relevant to the functions. <laughs> I just hope Jill doesn't get scolded for someone getting hacked into this thing. Yep. Oh, this is doubled. This isn't. This is it. Dut. Dut, dut, dut. We good? Big beer for Jill. Thanks. I need to remember to take care of the cans in my apartment. Do you drink lots of beer? One of the perks of the BTC issue liver implant is that I can drink lots of beer without getting too wasted. Oh, so you do have an augment. A liver implant. Oh. Should have expected. They gotta be able to keep taps on everybody here, so everyone's gotta get a microchip, like a pet. Hey, Jill. What kind of girl was Lenore? Hmm? Well... She was... calm and smart. Back in college, I was too thick-headed and got riled up easily. Stressed was my default state. So, just like you're behaving right now... Shut up. I was worse. Can't picture that. Don't. It's embarrassing. That's why, when she gets into stressed out situations, her default is to yell at people. Yelling at Gabby. I picture Jill to be relatively calm most days, but it's more of a professional mask than her default emotions. Anyway, she was always there, finding a way to cool me down. She was also able to hold conversations about pretty much any topic. One time, I saw her go from talking about video games to talking about sports. All that variety while still being a hardcore scientist. She would always push me into social interactions. If she saw me by myself, she would drag me with her. Ah, they both studied science. That's why before, Jill knows the um, chemical stuff from the periodic table. Watching people is fine, but talking to them is better, she would say. Lenore would always present me to her many acquaintances as the girl I don't mind cuddling with for hours. Ah, <sighs> man, I'm gonna miss her. Well, it sounds like somebody who was pushing Jill out of her boundaries, but... Man, it's really sad it ended up like this. I want to say that Lenore knew that you were sorry, but I... I can't. Because she doesn't. After a point, I didn't even think about getting back into a relationship with her, but... She was such an awesome person. I just wanted to apologize. And now... <sighs> you know... In a cruel twist of irony, she's the one that made me pick up bartending. Oh? Back when I was thinking what the hell to do with my life, I remembered a night we spent in a club. She started talking about how the drinks were synthesized, the chemistry involved, the reactions and all that. Everything sounded so fascinating. Oh, perfect song to come on. I remember saying that her talk made me want to start mixing drinks. She said, 
If everything else fails, why not take up bartending? Huh, interesting. Are you okay? For some value of okay, yeah. It's just... I wanted to thank you, Alma. Thank me? I guess I just needed someone to tell all of this to, and you were the one. You volunteered yourself. You insisted on listening to me. You stood there, listening to the whole thing from beginning to end. I know I might not be the most expressive person, that I'm not the one to spout love and fluffiness, but... I really like you. Oh. Maybe I'm just a bartender, and you're just a client. But I really appreciate your friendship, or at the very least, your patronage. I really enjoy working for you. <gasps> this is so sweet! <gasps> I'm gonna shed a tear! <sighs> Jill, are you dying? <laughs> oh, shut up! I'm trying to have a heart-to-heart -heart here! <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's just... It's weird for you to get so... sappy. Well, I just realized that the saddest thing is how I'll never be able to make amends. Yes, so you have to treat the people in front of you better, and tell them how you feel. And it hurts like fucking hell, you know? I never, and I mean I never, want to feel that way ever again. I don't want someone to suddenly exit my life, and have my last memory of them involve something nasty. I don't want the lingering grief of having burned a bridge on a whim. I want to avoid that at all cost, and if it means breaking character every once in a while, so be it. I'll let everyone know how I really feel about them. And if I ever fight with them, I'll swallow my pride, muster all the courage I can, and be the one to apologize. I hate feeling like this. Hate it. Hate it! <laughs> That's a nice resolution. Maybe I'll be a copycat and do the same. <sighs> Alright, enough sappiness. Get back here. I'm on duty, you know? Fine. It's almost closing time anyways. It was fun while it lasted, though. Hey. Yeah? I mean it, you know? Thanks for everything today. <laughs> Silly Jill. You listen to my problems and I listen to yours. That's what friends are for, right? Right. I'll be leaving now. Oh, before I forget. Did you ever talk about all this with your parents? They know the basics, but I haven't told them about Lenore's death yet. Why don't you do that sometime? I don't know. I don't want to bother them with my problems. Oh, you're their child! You're their only child! Don't be silly. They're your parents. They live to share your problems. You should try having a talk like this with them sometime. They'll appreciate it. Anyway, I'm out. See you on Sunday. Take care. Hmm, that Alma girl sure is nice. Oh, boss. Did you hear all that? Not all of it, but a good chunk, at the very least. Your expression changed a lot already. It did? You look happier. That's always good. Anyway, let's call it a day. And I expect an even brighter Jill tomorrow. Right. Oh, yeah, boss. About those chicken wings. Fucking idiots at the spicy chicken. Sorry, Dana. We won't have enough spices for your order until tomorrow, they said. Is that how they treat the regulars? Urgh, call the manager. Urgh. Boss? She won't even admit that she bought that on purpose for us. Aww. <laughs> Cherished titty hacker. She's a good friend. Making a good amount of money today. But it's all gonna go to the electricity, so... Say goodbye to that nice 10k soon. Earlier, when Jill was talking with Betty about how... 
did you become better or worse because of a relationship? I think it's pretty clear that it's better, even though the circumstances it was under are horrible. But, you know, people come into your life and they change you, and people exit your life, and that also changes you. If you're watching this, and you're thinking, Oh, there's someone that I want to apologize to, too. Maybe sometime soon would be a good time to reach out to them?